Hey guys, welcome back to Hershey's Garage. And on today's video, I'm gonna show you how to change your rear differential fluid out on a 2009 to 2013 Subaru Forester. Uh, this one specifically is a 2011, but it will be with those years involved. So stay tuned and I'll show you just how easy it is. And before we get started, here are some of the basic tools and the safety equipment that you'll need to complete this job. The first being a catch basin to catch that oil so it doesn't get on the floor. The second is you need safety glasses so you don't get it in your eyes. Uh, the third being some uh, gloves just to make sure that you don't get it on your hands. Uh, then you have paper towels, which that's optional, but uh, my wife doesn't like me getting anything on the floor. So that's a must for me. Um, then you're going to need your... Uh, vehicle specific gear oil which in this case is going to be Subaru's certified high performance gear oil uh, 75W slash 90. Uh, you can get any um, 75W 90 if you want. I just like to go with Subaru because it uh, uh, they recommend it in the manuals and so I know exactly what I'm getting. Um, and this stuff's a little pricey, but I think it's worth it. But you'll need 0.8 quarts. So just under, probably somewhere around here on the bottle here of fluid. And then you're going to need a siphon pump. And it doesn't have to be a nice one like this, but I will give a link down below where I got this. Uh, I think it was at Walmart and it was pretty cheap. So that's why I got that one. Uh, and then you're going to need a socket uh, wrench and then possibly uh, a breaker bar just in case uh, something gets uh, really rusty and it's it's hard to get off those two plugs in the back there. Uh, so let's get started with the job. Okay guys, the first thing that I'd like to do before I start this project is to get underneath the rear of the vehicle and find out where my differential is in the first place and see what kind of condition the plugs are in. And mine look pretty good. This is the differential here. And these, this is the drain plug here. And then this is the fill plug. And they both look like in good condition. The next step is we're going to hop in the vehicle and drive it for a bit. Uh, you can go to the grocery store or uh, drive around the block and get that differential nice and hot, the fluid there, so it drains uh, really good and gets all the old gunk out of there, mixing it uh, thoroughly. All right, guys, I just got back. I parked the vehicle on a flat level surface, and now it's time to go underneath the vehicle. Okay, guys, I'm under the vehicle now, and just make sure that uh, when you do this procedure, you wanna start with the top one first, the top bolt here, or plug, because if you take off the bottom one first to drain it, which this one is the drain plug, um, if, just in case, if this one is stuck on there, then you're pretty much screwed because uh, uh, then you won't be able to uh, fill this back up. So take the top one off, which is the fill plug first, before you take the bottom one off. All right, let's try this and go ahead and see what I can do. And I forgot to tell you, you might sometimes want to uh, get a uh, uh, rubber mallet just in case because... Sometimes this is a bear even with the breaker bar to get this off. So let's see what we can do here. And one more quick note, just make sure that you put your catch basin underneath to catch anything that comes out just in case. But we're going to do this one and then I'm going to do go down to the bottom. Okay, while I let that drain, I'll show you the differences between the plugs. This is the top one, and you can't get these mixed up because you'll know why when I, when I tell you here. This is the top one. Obviously, it looks good on the, the surface there, uh, this front surface, because um, it is not totally 
mixed with that uh, gear oil all the time. So it looks pretty good, but you wanna clean it off there real fast and make sure it's all good to go. Then you have the actual bottom one. And you'll know it's the bottom one because it has a little magnet on the top here. And you can tell that it's gunky as crap on there. And that's because uh, it uh, collects all the, the uh, junk on there so it doesn't go into your gears. So you wanna give that a nice little rub off there. And this is what it is supposed to look like when you're done. Something like that. I'll clean it off a little bit more, but that's what it's supposed to look like. So, so this is the bottom one with the magnet, and that is the top. Okay, now that the fluid is fully drained, it's time to take the bottom plug and put it back into the hole here, and then tighten it up to uh, usually what I do, if you don't have a torque wrench, uh, which it's not absolutely necessary, you tighten it up really snug and then go about a quarter of a turn. Um, I like to do things the technical way, so I use a torque wrench and uh, I'll show you what torque specifications it, sh it should be at over on the right hand side over here. Okay now that that's done you want to take your little siphon kit and insert it into the uh, bottle of gear oil. And that's why I got this one because it's a nice handy dandy one where you can tighten that on the bottle. And then, let's put that aside. And then you take your bottle and come underneath here and go to the top of the hole here and insert that little tube into the hole and start pumping the top and you pump the fluid in there until it starts to come and drip out the top of here. And you'll notice it when you're pumping because it'll come start dripping down and once it does that then it's all full and you can stop and put the plug back in. So you can watch me do it right now. All right, so after what seemed like an eternity uh, amount of pumping, it finally comes out. And as you can see, it's starting to drip just a little bit, but it's coming out that hole. So it is all full now. Now it's time to put the plug back in on the top here and then torque that one down to the same specification as this one. And like I said, I'll put that torque specification right over here. Okay guys, final step is to wipe off your project there. Make sure that there's no leaks. Pat yourself on the back. And then if you want, take a test drive uh, around the block or whatever, or turn on the vehicle and roll it out on the, the driveway and then roll it back. And then stop, shut off the engine, and check to make sure that nothing's leaking. But it shouldn't be, and you should be good to go, and it's a job well done. So if you like this vehicle, smat like this vehicle. If you like this program smash the like button and then give me a, a, a comment below to let me know how I did and uh, that way uh, YouTube will uh, allow to this video to be shared with everybody there so um, hopefully uh, everything works out for you and like I said let me know how it works out so thanks a bunch guys and uh, I guess I will see you on the next one peace